Newlands, the site of the second Castle Test match. It's day three of South Africa versus the West Indies. It's a beautiful day here at Cape Town with me. Alan Donald and everything, Alan, for uh, South Africa to do. This morning, uh, Robin, and good morning all. Darren Powell. First runs of the morning. Just be one. Uh, Powell was uh, disappointing yesterday afternoon, late, especially uh, when trying to bowl too short. He would be looking to lift his game, but uh, as you say, all oh, for South Africa to play for. Interesting, it's been a tight test match. There was a time yesterday, uh, Robin, where I thought, and I was off air, and I thought the West Indies started to bowl a bit too short. And they bowled so well after lunch, and uh, especially uh, Dwayne Bravo, the pitch on day three to Weinberg end. That's the end that uh, Darren Powell is bowling uh, from. A bare patch is starting to uh, appear, but uh, all in all, it still looks a, a good pitch. I agree with you. With um, I think South Africa bowl a little bit on the on the short side as well. It, talking to Mark Boucher this morning, he, uh, asking him about the pitch and what's it like to bat on. He said it's virtually impossible to drive on the up. You can drive a half folly. Anything a little bit short sits up and looks at you. It's a day to die for here in Cape Town. It really is a beautiful day. Just a gentle southeaster. 25 degrees is the maximum temperature expected. Sunset just after 8 o'clock. mind that though that's going to go for four fine cricket shot certainly is beautiful drive from Boucher that brings up the 100 partnership the 600 South African partnership of the current season and the first one interestingly enough not involving Jacques Cullis just beyond the half just around about half volley wasn't it it's slightly on the up but not much it's regarded as a half volley beautifully played Just outside the line, I would say, might have been a bit of bat involved. Not a huge appeal from Bravo himself, but the ability again to slide the ball back in. In fact, the way that he got out uh, Ashim Amla. There it comes back in at Boucher. Doesn't hit the bat until after the pad, but well outside the line. Nicely played shot, square cut from Ashwell Prince. He won't get four for it though. They're into the lead with it, South Africa. It's nicely played that, right on top of it, gets it to the ground, gets it in the gap as well. So South Africa now lead by one run. Was greeted with a lot of clapping. And there it is. Mark Boucher gets to 50 again. That is 27.50. And this one will be particularly sweet because his team has been in trouble here and they needed needed him to play well in partnership with Ashwell Prince like that it's way too short and put away quite nicely by Ashwell Prince end of the over brings up the 250 as well 251 for five
it's three out of four. I think he's telling him he's had two. Oh, that's nothing. The West Indies of the 70s used to bowl four and over. <laughs> you were always going there. Twice as quick again. <laughs> you were always going there. He's not as quick as Michael Holding when he's just warming up. You handled him now. I'm not sure about that. I batted <laughs> against him. I'm not sure I handled him. <laughs> I survived. That's four short balls. So they're trying to suck uh, Prince into hooking or pulling, aren't they? Well, that's four more to Mark Boucher. Thicky shot outside edge. South Africa looking for any lead they can get. This partnership must stay looking quite comfortable. Well, West Indies also changed their policy after the first test. They decided to leave out Sammy. Now that's proved so far anyway to have been perhaps not the right decision, particularly it seemed like Fidel Edwards was carrying some sort of ankle injury into this test match anyway, so he was at risk. Well, it looked like initially quite a good shot. Mark Boucher playing across this delivery, just going over to the off stump a bit too much. Good thinking by Dwayne Bravo. And looked to be a little bit high. There we go, going over the stumps. It's bold him. Dragged it on Mark Boucher. For short, he tried that shot a number of times. Succeeded only in getting a bottom edge on the ball, crashing into his middle stump. Second time in a row in the series that he's been dismissed in this fashion. Now that ball wasn't short enough to pull. He got out hooking a bouncer in the first innings in Port Elizabeth. The second innings, this was a carbon copy of that dismissal. So shot selection, letting Mark Boucher down. He played well though, South Africa 260 for six. Paul Harris comes to the wicket with a dismissal of Mark Boucher. This has just opened the door for the West Indies now. South Africa have a long tail. Paul Harris at number eight. He's not renowned for his batting. And that's why. He's played 10 test matches, average of seven. His best was 46. That happened recently in Pakistan. He did play well there in combination with Mark Boucher. Another look at Mark Boucher's dismissal. Bravo picking up his fourth. Not that short, just back of a length. And Mark Boucher probably premeditated there. Gets a bottom edge. So the West Indies have finally broken this partnership. Bravo looking for the LBW there. It's just a little bit too straight inside edge for four valuable runs for South Africa. And that's all he needed to do. Comfortably taken by Renako Morton at second slip. Powell finally sees, learns the value of pitching the ball up. And a simple catch in the end. It's up. It's swinging away. There's the outside edge. And a nice, comfortable height to Renaka Morton, who makes no mistake. So the seventh South African wicket goes down. Paul Harris goes for four. It's 265 for seven. Anranil comes to the wicket. 
I guess by his standards in Port Elizabeth, he had a reasonable test match of the bat. He got 16 in the first innings and 34 in the second. So if he can get 34 today, it'll be a, a very handy contribution under the current circumstances. The single first ball of the over to expose Nell. Well, a bit of a mix up there. All's well in the end. You know, thinking the single was there. Wanting to give his senior partner the strike. Nick Bravo was swiftly onto that. And could easily with a better throw have been left short of his ground. should have stopped that one and it's raced away for four it's a good shot but uh, desperation is required now in the field Lewis got across but uh, not quickly enough to prevent this boundary looks good but he missed it. They don't look too clever. No, it's something that both these teams suffer from. They're both from eight down. They're all tail enders as opposed to lower, lower order players. There is a slight difference. I think it's okay having a tail if you're top five and your wicketkeeper a crackerjack batsman then doesn't matter so much but when your batting sides are um, sort of okay you know pretty all right average then it can be very important that's a good shot that's what you've got to do as a tail end if you're not very good hang around and you've probably got a couple of areas where you fancy hitting the ball i've seen him play that in the one day matches that's what he's got to do can't expect them to play like batsmen so they've got to pick out a couple of areas where they really fancy hitting the ball I think and then when they get it up there hit it because if they just hang around and poke around they're going to get out they're not that good it's a good stroke Just got there. He's driven the ball well, Prince, when uh, it's been in the slot to do so. Well, he's selected his shots well. He's waited for the short ball. He gets this very full but wide, and he gets his foot out there to the ball. So his selection of shot and his concentration has been exemplary. That sounds like a nick to me, and it is. It sounded like it to Russell Tiffin too. So off goes Andre Nell, pushing it a length ball outside off stump, and the eighth wicket falls. Yeah, nice ball. Just got it on the right length and line, and it was good enough to nick it. Simple. Deserves some success. He's bought a long time. 284 for eight. This is a good game. It's ten aside, isn't it? Both got an injured bowler. Finnell Edwards, and he's not going to bowl. Stain's not going to bowl. Ten aside. They say that Stain is going to bowl. It's going to come out and bowl, but he's only going to do. There's actually an email here. This somebody asked a very simple question: Is it really worth bowling Stain in the second innings? Does the run? Does he run the risk of more seriously injuring himself and therefore jeopardising his availability for the Durban test? I think they've made up their minds that he's not going to play in the Durban test anyway because of the injury, so he can just break down. Well, that's... Uh, I bet Sean Pollock's hoping he breaks down. That's it. 
That's think he'd like to play in Durban. Mm, he certainly would. Oops. It's the end of a tidy over. It's 108 overs gone. 284 for eight. Just a little thin edge. It just shows that this is how you bowl at tail enders. No differently than you would bowl at numbers one to six. Length, off stump, in the channel. They'll nick them. They might take longer to nick them because they're not so good. But they'll nick them. As soon as you bowl straight, tail enders who learn to bat a little bit tend to score off you. Straight up in the air. Is it going to reach the man? No, it's not. It slowed down towards the ball and therefore didn't get to it. It's Darren Sammy. And he puts his head down. Well, one of those reasons will be because it's Ashwell Prince, but there's another reason. Five wickets for Dwayne Bravo. It would have been. Looks to go on the pull shot here. Top edge and straight up. Should have got there. Well, he slowed down at the last minute, Darren Sammy. Just totally misjudged that and in the end didn't get a hand on it. Not so sure Dwayne Bravo would accept it. Especially seeing as he's gone for four there. And of a productive over for Ashwell Prince. It's 299 for eight. Not so long ago that the ball wouldn't run to the boundary from that shot. It wouldn't run from some that were blazed towards the boundary through the gap. I was having a look at the ground staff this morning cutting the outfield for me. And the quantity of grass cuttings I saw at the end of that operation suggested to me that it wasn't one day's growth. 300 is up for South Africa. They will be happy and uh, they would have been helped, no doubt, by what you're talking about. The fact that the ball has rolled to the boundary a bit more often and a bit more easily. No, my question is, is there... A regulation regarding the cutting of the outfield we could see that the grass was obviously a lot longer on the first day and today we can see that it's a lot shorter the ball is getting to the boundary a lot easier the outfield is quicker I really wonder if there's some sort of regulation because it, it seems fairly irregular to me. Shouts of two. I'm not sure he'll be able to get back for two. It'll be tight, this. He's gone. He's definitely gone. He is definitely gone. He has run back for two. He set off. He felt that the ball was wide off the man. It wasn't. It spun towards the man just a touch. And so an error in judgment there by Ashwell Prince. The fielding pretty good. Jerome Taylor gets the throw in. The dive comes in from Ashwell Prince, but is out of his ground. Way short. Misses out on 100. Run out for 97. Well, 98 because he was going back for the second. But no doubt whatsoever there. Umpire Talful went upstairs. It was just as a precaution, just in case, but he was miles out. There you go, there's confirmation. South Africa have lost another wicket. They've lost Ashwell Prince. He played so well, deserved to get to 100, but his error in judgment meant that he missed it by just two. Well done anyway. 301 for nine. Three hundred and one for nine, South Africa. Makayandini comes to the wicket. A lead of fifty-eight. They want just a bit more, as much as they can get. Thirty-two not out. Is Makayandini's best? 
be a good time to get that. A good time to get 50. Each of a delivery. Why hasn't he bowled out at the, the main line bowl, the batsman, the top order? Well, that's the question we'll forever be asking ourselves. And this is the run out again. He side into take two and a bullet of a throw from Jerome Taylor right over the sticks. And Ramden does the rest. And a outstanding innings from Ashwell Prince. Falls short of his hundred. But it's been very important in the South African cause. It's another good delivery. He worked really hard, Ashwell Prince, didn't he? He worked so, so hard yesterday. It was tough. He didn't time a whole lot yesterday. And when he did, some of the time it didn't go off to the outfield or through the outfield to the boundary. Well, that's four. Bill Stain playing his natural game. Top edge over third man, over slip rather, for four. But, but if the, the average first innings, I keep saying first innings, the average opening partnership is less than the lead, you can reasonably expect that the team batting is going to lose a wicket before the lead is knocked off, maybe two. So that gives significance to, I would say, a lead of this size. That's a top shot. He's given himself room. And he's got that right out the middle of the bat. Right out the middle of the bat. Appreciated by the crowd. Your point. This is hurting the West Indies. Yes, it is. It's a good shot. He's hit straight back down the ground. He's gotten enough on it to get it to the boundary, even on this slow outfield. Dalstone made some runs in county cricket first for Essex when he played there a couple of years ago. A couple of made a few big scores there actually and uh, played of course for Warwickshire last season so uh, he's got the ability to get a few is he going to catch it this time yes he does up in the air the change works the wrist spinner is successful Lewis picks up his second ever wicket in test cricket so he'll be a happy man well, the lead is 78. Uh, he went for the boundary. There's no doubt he went for a sixer. He didn't take long to look at the ball, did he? Two balls, that's all it took. Straightforward catch has to be taken, but I mean, he could have just had a little bit more look at the bowling before he tried to slog him out of the park. But bowlers batting don't think like batsmen. That's it to think at all. 320A1, yeah, pretty good that lead is 78 that's good too so it's up to the bowlers now i've got an opportunity here to knock two or three over and really grasp the game by the scruff of the neck south african batting lineup there lots of starts all the way down ashwell prince played beautifully he worked very hard for his 98 deserved 100 was unlucky not to get there mark Roucher played well as well so in the end, South Africa had to work hard for their runs, but they got there. They've got the lead that they wanted. Partnerships, one significant one between Prince and Boucher. That's what turned the game in South Africa's favour. They were in all sorts of trouble at that stage, but the two of them played very well together. Dwayne Bravo was the star of the show. He bowled uh, superbly for the West Indies. Other good contributions from Taylor. Powell, not at his best, but picked up two wickets in the end. So I guess the West Indies will be reasonably happy. Could have been a lot better for them, but they bowled them out in the end, which is what they wanted to do. So South Africa lead by 78. Well, we've got Ganga there, so he, he was always down to open. 
Gail. Gail's not there. I can't see him, can you? No, at the moment I can't. So Ramden has come out. Well, I don't understand that because he'd be the one player, if I was captain of South Africa, I'd be wary of. People bowling with the new ball, lots of gaps because they're going to have slip, lots of gaps, and he can destroy you in no time. He could knock off that uh, that lead in about an hour, and he could put you on the back foot and take away the initiative from you. He would worry me, so I wouldn't be worried about Ramdi, and I wouldn't be worried about uh, anybody else. They'll play their own game, they may play well, but they're not going to not going to take the initiative from you quickly. Which means, from South Africa's point of view, unless they bowl badly, they should be able to exert some control. Whether they get wickets or not, we'll wait and see. But at least if you can keep control of the game, it's going to take them a while to knock off the lead. South Africa also making a change. Dal Stein clearly not, uh, not bowling. Andre Noll taking the new ball in his absence. Ganga didn't get runs in the first innings. Played well in Port Elizabeth. He was pretty solid down there. Got a good delivery from Dale Stain when he was caught behind in the first innings. Well, Graham Smith won't be happy with that. Real loosener by Andre Nell down the leg side. Well, he's the sort of bowler that would just worry me a bit with Andre Nell because I'd want him to keep his cool. South Africa have clawed themselves to a lead and uh, I want him to bowl sensibly with the new ball not get carried away and excited because he's obviously a very excitable lad likes to chatter a lot and be saying less talking better bowling that's it get the ball in the right area often enough create problems for the batsman What a corker of a delivery. As Fred Truman would have said to him, that were wasted on thee, lad. <laughs> a better batsman might have nicked it. Just that movement off the seam, angling in through the air and moving away off the seam. Pretty difficult to play. It's a comfortable crowd. There's a half-hearted uh, catch it and Nell no, not interested off the pad. Well, standing in front of the stumps, there was reason to appeal for that. Passed pretty close, close enough. But from behind, this a bit clearer that that came off the thigh pad. Oh, beautiful, beautiful delivery. He's getting frustrated now. He must just hold himself together. Talking of England and as a wicket keeper, many wicket keepers uh, touring there for the first time have struggled a little bit with the ball dipping on them and, and things. Did you find that when you first toured England? Oh, certainly. Certainly. Um, the, the atmospheric conditions in England tend to make the ball do a lot of stuff. You, mostly when it passes the, the, the stumps and you have to sort of make your decisions a little later in England in terms of especially standing back to really quick stuff. A couple have just moved into the commentary box. Alan Donald is with Tom and Bangla. Thank you, Jackers. Once again, past the outside edge. I don't think anyone was sure about that one. But it's uh, class, high-class bowling from uh, Andre Nella Mackay and Tini. And I'm uh, a makeshift opening batsman. He's having all sorts of trouble. Ramden. Can't believe it. Oh, he's still there. 
Runs are hard to come by right now with this new ball. That'll go for four. What's that come off? Pad? Yeah. He's trying to go too straight now, isn't he? Trying to... He's bowled some really good balls and pitched on about off straightened and gone past the outside edge. Hasn't found the edge now. Maybe looking for a magic ball. That's going to pitch on leg and there's no way he's going to go back from there to the off stump. This whole spell so far is getting the ball to uh, to swing away. Just a little bit of shape and also decking a tiny bit. That one was too straight and it did nip back. And uh, by the time it struck the pad, the archer was left for dead. So Ramden fighting hard here. Groundhog Day. <laughs> That's a Jaffa. Really is a Jaffa. Fuller. And uh, good seam position and just holding. Look at this. Just holding its own, playing the wrong line. And uh, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing Randon can do. Nell has just got a hold his nerve that's all she's got to keep plugging away yep Bouch is saying uh, it's a nicer day as well <laughs> that is going to be off the pad and gone for four once again so four leg buys I'm sure Mr. Speedstow, you'd have been in this situation, bowling at somebody and just unable. Every time sort of going at off goes past the edge. As soon as you try and go at the stumps, it doesn't work out either. What to do? South Africa bowled 13 overs with this new ball, and the job that's being done by the two that are out there, well, you know, well, I've heard it said, they say get the shine off the ball, don't they? But also... The bowlers get a bit tired from running up and bowling. Here's Stain again. It's a good delivery, very good delivery. Swings it. That's his asset. But hey, dear, I mean, <laughs> I suppose we have to leave off that because we can't really get an answer. He's running up. No worries. Well, some worries with the hammy but able to get through his action, no trouble. It must take a whole heap of strain when you run up to bowl because you, you've got to charge in. There's no option. Well, I'm sure the West Indies dressing room will be asking the same question. Mm, definitely. It's a good shot, that. The outfield's better. It's quicker. So we're not going to be catching too many as you chase after them if they've been timed well. Four to Ramden. Yeah, that's a lovely shot. Maybe also looking for that glory ball, just coming a little bit straighter. It was shaping, but uh, it was over-pitched. Lovely shot, straight past, and uh, Ramden releases the pressure somewhat. shot on the pads it's a long boundary that side so just three it's just different isn't it when it's at 130 a bit more time for the batsman to make a decision it must be frustrating for far, guys who are fast bowlers when the pace goes out not as much as they used to be and you run up and it's the same brain yeah you feel, almost feel like you're not a threat you know and and there's no question what we're seeing here is that the ball is swinging late because the ball's at 130 smashed that might go for four and it does throws a bat at it Ramden and uh, takes his chance and a welcome boundary 
Always getting away from him. Starts wide, swings away a bit. And the arms can be freed. He doesn't get all of that. He's looking to hit it a bit straighter than that. Crowd have enjoyed their, uh, their cricket today. It's been a good crowd in. It's been a good test match as well. There's a fanatical fan. He won a trip to London. Andrew Richards, there he is, very happy. Celebrating his prize, going to London. Why not? Went to a lot of trouble, Andrew. Even had his gear bag with him. With sundry items. Depicting his love of his team. Good shot. Firmly struck through Moran. Should be three and is. Dal Stein doing the chasing there. Saw hamstring and all. He's been patient, Darren Ganga. He's left a lot of deliveries. And has played very correctly to the ones that he's been able to get away. Well, that's a solid shot. Was short and sat up for Ramdin and got the treatment. That was an excellent shot. Short and wide, Ramdin bounced on this one. He was into position beautifully, got on top of the bounce and played the square cut to perfection. That'll do him the world of good. Does play his shots, Dinesh Ramdin. Sometimes indiscriminately. But there was certainly nothing wrong with that. Second boundary over. It wasn't in complete control of this one. Got the top edge, but uh, it was safe enough. Running down to find leg for the second boundary of the over. This is rather uncharacteristic of Makai Antini. Doesn't normally react like this when he's hit for four. But the short pitch ball, and again, as we've seen so many times in this test, the ball's sitting up long enough for the batsman to get it away safely. Good running there. Frustration for McCartney. 10 runs off the over. 50 comes up for West Indies. 22 overs gone. 50 without loss. Well, he's gone over the top with this one. Square the wicket. Didn't appear to try to keep it down. He just looked at the room he was given and threw the bat at it. He's got himself four runs, Dinesh Ramdin. Well, we said a little while ago that something has got to give, and certainly it has, because the previous over went for 10. The very next ball of this over, or the previous over from the Weinberg end, went for 10. The very next ball from that end goes for another brownie. So rammed it. It's just got a little bit of momentum going in his innings. The South Africans just going on the defensive a little bit. They realise that every run, they're not getting the breaks. Got three in the covers. Ball. Another good ball, but didn't nick it. Sorry. Can't have that. Bad luck. It's interesting. Callis was a lot keener than Boucher. Boucher normally throws the ball 30 miles into the air when uh, he's absolutely convinced, but there's nothing that convincing about Boucher. Callis was more convinced. It's cut away. Straight to backward point. Prince the fielder. Fell just too short of a hundred. Misjudged the second run. Well, that's strange. That very good shot there that went straight to the fielder. It's got Jack Callis to signal to Smith at first slip. 
to put the man back on the boundary. Yep, he's gone all the way back, three quarters way back now. Bold, bold, bold. Eventually, that was a corker. I tell you, that would have got a lot of people out. No disgrace in getting out to that. Young Ramden's done very well. 32 runs as a makeshift opener. He's nothing to be embarrassed about or ashamed. This is a cracker of a delivery, and he's done very well. Just fancied it somehow. The, just the previous over, he'd bowled so many in the right place. And uh, eventually he's justly rewarded. Ramden goes for a patient 32. And West Indies have lost their first wicket, trailing by 19. Renarko Morton, very different number three, different type of number three player that the ones that uh, Mr. Boycott on my left has been watching over the many, many years and playing alongside and against. Well, that's what worries you. A number three who averages 23 in Test cricket, sorry, he's vulnerable particularly outside off stump he likes to get forward and throw the bat at the ball not caress it throw the bat at the ball if it's up there outside off stump but you know you've got a problem in test cricket if one of your prime places number three averages 23 this is the wicket I mean, that, that's a, just a good ball, isn't it? I mean, you talk about the lad could do this and could do that, but, I mean, that's a good length ball. It's right in the corridor of uncertainty that makes you wonder, shall I play it, shan't I? It leaves him a bit. No, yeah, it's just a very good ball. Oh, hello. Let's hit the hit the batsman. Otherwise, it was five. <laughs> there's no one backing it up. Well, there's no one there to back it up. Closes well, it down. There was a yes/no there, wasn't there? A stutter. That was the problem. There always is with runouts when one wants to go and the other one doesn't. And then finally, they do go you know that uh, there's a good chance of a run out the laws and, and with runners and stuff like that how can it be right that a bloke comes into bat with a runner which indicates that he has an injury that stops him running here's that near run out again Pollock didn't miss by much let me tell you not by much comes in at number 10 with a runner because he can't run you presume and an hour later he's running in bowling 140 k's an hour oh. out oh. just like that well if he's only got one leg he wants to keep on bowling that's all i can say if he gets wickets if you're his captain he say you keep going you're not going back to the dressing room you man Beautifully bowled, just left him. Watch the ball, it just left the batsman off the pitch and the footwork was poor. It was nowhere near the pitch or length of the ball. Yeah, well, I said, can't average 23 in test cricket and bat number three and expect to have a successful career. 60 for two. Marlon Samuels then coming in at number four, South Africa having worked really hard with no success, have suddenly knocked over two, and the West Indies are still in a deficit situation by 18 runs. Samuels has shown a great deal of patience on this tour so far. Ninety-four in the first innings in Port Elizabeth, 40 in the second. Uh, 
And 51 in the first innings here. Little bit of fortune. Yes, it was a moral victory for the ball. Watch Samuel. He, he relaxes his grip. He doesn't push hard at it. He's beaten as he's playing the ball. He suddenly realizes he's beaten and he just holds the bat. He could have kept on pushing there hard and it may well then have carried to slip. He just stops his shot there. bit aerial but it's flown down towards third man and will run away for four beautifully bold just got the batsman reaching for it didn't he Ganga couldn't resist just feeling for it, a little too far outside off stump oh that's beautiful stuff nothing for it except four runs to the batsman Yeah, he's uh, probably had a couple already. I wouldn't want to be him in that, uh, that suit. He's been wearing it all day. He's going to, L to London in July sometime, I think it is. There's a big shout. It's not out there, though. The sound is one of the pad, and umpire Simon Tuffle is pretty good. He's not convinced then, so gives it not out. Yeah, definitely. It's a great delivery, but it, it, almost hitting the, the foot, really. He's had a look back, Samuels, and immediately Boucher not throwing that ball that convincingly. Yep, missed it quite comfortably. And uh, brilliant decision by Simon Torfel. Jack Callis steaming in. Oh, dearie me. Beautiful delivery. Pitched up full and... Uh, Samuels' eyes lit up. And he's got it through the gap for four. They just shouted about it. Make it minus three for three. And Marlon Samuels goes for the drive. He's going to get four. They all count, but the heart would have been in the mouth. Cheney back into the attack from the Weinberg end. Pretty good move, this from Smith. Got about as much as he's likely to get out of stain for the afternoon and injured stain teeny bold very tidily up front of five maidens and his next three overs went for 16 yes he's found the spot he wants to pitch the ball on this pitch and He's been living there. Bowled him! First ball of the spell, Ganga goes. Just found a gap between the inside edge and the pad. And the ball smashes into middle stump. Well, he fought hard, Darren Ganga. It's a fuller delivery. Tries to play that ball a little bit too square. And Tini sneaks it between bat and pad. Hits the stumps. Darren Ganga has gone for 22. The West Indies 81 for 3. Well, Shivaran Chandra Paul comes to the wicket with a big job to do. Impressive career he's had and been the most consistent of the West Indian batsmen for some years now but he's coming into a situation where the West Indies basically have three runs on the board they've lost three wickets and this is how Darren Ganga went tried to play a bit too square I reckon and left that gap all angled in didn't seem to do a lot 
Got right through the gate and hit that off stump. Well, make that eight. Beautiful shot from Marlon Samuels. One of the toughest shots in the book to play, the on-drive, just on the on-side of the stumps between mid-on and the bowler. Tini helps the shot to be played a little bit because of the angle that the ball is coming in. But, uh, the execution is superb. Wonderful timing too. That's nicely done. Got right inside it, Chivnaran Chandra Paul, and just clipped it down to fine leg. So it's four to him. The West Indies lead goes up to 12. And that ball wasn't pitched that much on the stumps. He moved right across his wicket. Got a well outside off stump. And just worked it away with a natural angle. Big decision here, it's out, it's out. He's fallen right over Marlon Samuels and tried to play that onto the onside. And Andre Nell has made the breakthrough. Well, I don't think this was a difficult decision when we see it again. It's fairly full and he gets tangled up with his feet. His feet are going nowhere. He just shuffles onto the crease, then he plays back. I don't think it's too difficult. I know he angles it in, but that ball hasn't got far to go when it hits him on the back foot, actually. It's not got far to go. They're definitely going to shout for that. And I can see why the umpire gave him out. He just got made a real big mistake with his footwork. And footwork is the key to good batting. 93 for four. They need a captain's innings from him. The boat's being rocked. Just 15 ahead. They get another one here, South Africa. They'll feel well, well on their way. Well, this is awkward for Gale. I mean, normally he's a, he's a free stroke playing player. He's got 15 minutes to bat. I wonder how he'll play. Will he play his natural game, trying to play shots? This is the wicket, you see how Samuel's got over, he sort of fell over, he got too far over offside, he fell then over to the off as the ball's nipping back and he just got tangled up with his feet. Well that was the over, really, not just disappointing, I mean I think there were four out of the six, he didn't have to play. And you want to you want to buy him to bowl at Gale is your fastest, your best bowler, is your number one bowler. You know that Gale's their most threatening batsman. Got a chance there to put him under pressure, made it easy for him. It's been a good day for South Africa, though in the end they've definitely uh, well more than edged it. They've got themselves into quite a good position through the batting of uh, of the two batsmen and then the bowling at the end. So this is the state of the game.